Hey love bugs, this is Riles. I'm back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed and doing blessed and highly favored and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome into my returning subs, my grown extended beautiful family. As always, thank you so much for the love and support. It is truly appreciated. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste, love and blessings, love and light. And many blessings are definitely coming your way. If you have been watching my videos for a while and have not already, please drop a line. I would love the chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me and if you feel like the videos just give you a good uplift or some kind of peace or insight that you truly need it please you know go ahead give a thumbs up and share we greatly appreciate it and much love and protection towards your way anybody that comes on my videos everything is divinely protected highly loved and anything that is not you know towards my serving of needs and positivity that reflects and projects harm is being sent back to you ten times fold except mine is going to have love light and blessings of healing um and the video i'm doing today is called twin flame 101 hey okas well no it ain't even that <laughs> it's called my story from a healing perspective um a situation that i look at will never be the same it's it's not uh it started me on my path of how i started doing videos you know um, being able to deal with a lot of things that I, I deal with is not easy. It's not easy for anybody who deals with a lot of trauma, drama, whatever. And it is hard to be able to digest things at times. Sometimes it feels surreal. Um, I've talked about this story before, but I guess God is wanting me to talk about it again because I have new views, perspectives on the situation that I've gone through because of my situation. And it's not easy. You know, um, you have to be very selective of how you say things because I want to speak from my heart, not from fears of projection, not fears of anger. You know, this is not um, to talk bad about anybody. It's just the truth. You know, I always tell people, you know, never dim your light. Never uh, play small. You know, speak, speak up for yourself. You know, hold boundaries. You know, allow yourself to be selective about what you entertain and what you attract. You know, um, and from going through these different things I've went through, you know, I had to accept a lot of things. You know, I've lost my children because of this situation. Uh, I have no family that I talk to at all. Uh, only family that I have in contact with, you know, since I'm highly connected to my spirit realm is my father, my grandparents, my great grandparents, brother, all those different things, plus my family and friends that's protected me. Um, it, it hasn't been easy, you know, it's hard for me to get close with anybody because as soon as um, I tell my situation on what brought me here, people flip on me or they just no longer want to talk to me. Um, from my situation, I've had, you know, death threats in all forms, especially from people that claim to love my dad, you know, um, and he, he's a celebrity, you know, um, different things like you know, having to face the fact of that, you know, not getting closure, not really knowing your father. You know, I've talked to my father on and off throughout my years and just didn't know it was my father. The only way he can be able to talk to me if he said he was my uncle, you know, a close family friend. My father is Prince, Prince Roger Snelson. Um, I love, I love that man with all my heart, you know. Um, it hasn't been easy to be able to digest that, you know, at times, you know, even you can probably feel my energy is like, Ugh, I don't like talking about this. Um, but it's been a very hurtful situation, you know. Um, family just doesn't want me talking about it because they don't want that truth to come out. You know, they say my dad doesn't have children. I was born in 1977, May 19th. Um, my dad didn't start uh, getting into the record biz. It fell through on my birthday, the day I was born. Um, so I had to be given up for adoption and going through that, you know, I knew that was a lot on him because the day, you know, I was born, you know, you get a record deal and the only way you were able to keep me, if you got on your record deal, if you were able to do it because my mom's, uh, parents didn't want me to, um, be born out of wedlock. They were supposed to get married, but since that didn't happen that way, you know, I had to be given up for adoption. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who are saying, oh, you know, it's uh, rumors that, you know, you're not his daughter. And I'm just like, I look at splitting image of my dad. I have receipts, you know, and it's just like got death threats saying, you know, the family's going to sue me and different things like that. I had to deal with a lot of BS by that, but it was just at that point 
that I had to just shut it down and just like, you know, if I'm def uh, defaming somebody's name, especially with my dad on who he is, you know, I got proof all right here in my videos. You can sue me for it, but yet nobody never does, you know, um, and it's really been hard. You know, I can't speak on my dad that much. You know, it, it gets hard all the time when you see so many people. Um, you know, have different accounts where they share my dad's music, you know, the stories, uh, you know, different people they connected with or just pictures, you know. And it really, you know, I, I talk to him all the time and I'm like, Daddy, you were really loved. You know, you are really loved. And, you know, that helps towards that healing process. But being in that, you know, I had a lot of people tell me, oh, Rosalind, that's cool. You know, it's like your dad is an awesome musician, you know, and I feel very blessed. You know, I brag about my dad. My dad is freaking awesome. You know, uh, but also at the same time, I had to be humbled by that. You know, um, it hasn't really been easy to talk about that, especially when you have people around you that, you know, are trying to take you out. You know, I, I've had people that I've seen as family and friends and trying to figure out how can they be able to get me into a situation to where I can no longer be here, you know, so they can get their cut. You know, um, and it was hard because people are always like, oh, he didn't have any kids, you know, said he wasn't having any kids. But, it, you know, I tell people if you are a true Prince fan, even though he doesn't like that word fan, is fanatic, you will listen to his music. You can hear it all day. But if you're not listening to it, you will see different times that he's talked about a will. You hear different times where he says, hey, I have a child. I have a lot of explaining to do, you know, different things like that. You know, a, a soul heir, a daughter of a soul. Uh, what, it, what is it? The beginning of that, that song, Seven. The soul heir. Look in the, little, uh, look in the mirror. A little girl <laughs> growing inside. The soul heir to a $10 million estate that her father left behind. You know, seven men watch her every move. And she keeps, you know, and it goes blah, 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 blah. But anyways, um, going through this, you know, I had to really get a deeper perspective of it. You know, because it's the situation where uh, my family from both sides is angry because I wasn't supposed to get this far. You know, I wasn't able to get this strong. You know, being able to be comfortable in my own skin, being able to be comfortable with my uh, spiritual gifts. You know, uh, it, it was very nerve wracking. You know, I had constant. Uh, what is it? Nervous breakdowns because of the situation is hard when you didn't get closure. It's hard uh, when your family doesn't want to acknowledge you because you come out, they're not entitled to anything. So they do everything they can to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, even regardless of all the proof that they have, there's some kind of way they did different, you know, different things to get over loopholes that, you know, my dad left everything to me, you know. Um, and that it, it wasn't. You know, to me it was about money, but it wasn't money to me. It, it was about closure, being able to embrace what I've had. You know, I emulated my dad in so many times, you know, um, so many ways that, um, you know, I used to get punished for it. You know, anytime I would sing one of my dad's songs, I would get hit, you know, or threatened. You know, got to learn how to play Purple Rain, got my piano taken away, you know. And it, it was like I was punished for being like him. You know, they felt like it, it was wrong to do that my mom didn't but her husband did but you know having to come to terms and really look at everything that I've gone through since the time I did that video before it allowed me to see that I'm my own person nobody can't steal my shine nobody can't steal my truth you know um, and nobody can steer me off my path these are the only things that I can do you know regardless of you know um, the desperations of people putting things on me just to make my appearance change or me not to have confidence in myself and not realizing the more that people have placed on me, the more they hurt me, the more they block me, it allowed me to go for more. Like you can't keep anything from me. There's always a way around something, you know, um, uh, being able to deal with a lot of things. They put their fears on me, uh, thinking that was going to have me cave in, but actually it didn't. You know, it actually created strength for me, resilience, you know, motivation, determination in so many different ways. And it, it came to that point where, you know, I used to just cry to God and say, you know, it's not fair. You know, I can't give my dad acknowledgement on Father's Day. You know, I can't 
uh, defend him, when I see people talk ill of him, um, can't say anything on his anniversary, you know, birthday, anything like that, you know, and I just get angry because it's just like people can, you know, showcase my dad all the day, all, all along, you know, but when it comes to his actual daughter, you know, I can't do that, you know, because it wasn't safe for me to be able to do. And being able to speak on this and being able to be open about it, you know, you never know what your experience can really help somebody with. You know, we all go through different things that can really shake us up. You know, being in that situation like, is this really me? <laughs> is this really happening right now? You know, and I, I've gone through that constantly, you know, constantly gone through that. You know, I had to go through a lot of different things that I, you know, I went with on my worst enemy and I got a lot of them from this situation. I had lost everybody in my life, you know, um, because of my truth. Or I had people with egotistical vibrations, you know, wanting to challenge me or try to hurt me in some kind of way over things that I had no control over, you know. But looking at my situation, it has allowed me to have a different perspective in my life. It hasn't been easy going on day by day, but I had to keep moving, you know trying to understand why I had to go through this, but knowing that sooner or later God was going to give me that clarity. Being able to understand to the depths of it, to use everything as a mechanism of healing, you know, not coping mechanism, not addiction mechanism, or, you know, I forgot what it, you, what is, what is it, cat dog, um, self-medicate, those different things, you know, because I, I, when I first started this, I numb myself all the time. I constantly smoke uh, herbs all the time um, and, and I would drink every now and then just to be able to numb the pain of what I was going through you know because it was hard for me to have to digest that you know I always wanted to meet my family my mom wanted me to know uh, my father but it was just the fact is her husband was dead set against that and it was only if they they were able to brag about it you know towards other people I was water, water cooler talk where I was made fun of you know because of who my dad was and it would be at that time where, you know, I had to really face things, really, really face things on seeing how it truly was this, you know, I had to allow myself to be understanding on why people are like that, you know, um, growing up in a toxic foundation with their parents and stuff like that, I had to allow myself to understand we, we pass on things of our understanding, of the way we see things, how we feel things, how we know things speak on things you know um and it took me a long time to get out of that rage it took me a long time to get out of that hatred you know having homicidal tendencies you know stuff like that because they knew this whole time who my father was um and knowing all the poverty that I had to go through different things it was just like and it was so hurtful to digest that when I was going through struggle you know with me and my three girls you know while they were living off of my trust fund and living nice you know, and I had to really go through that. You know, I'm still going through it. You know, and it was a point where the devil used this to break me. You know, it's like if we take everybody from her, take our money from her, you know, no kind of foundation of uh, finances, stabi financial stability, or her children away, she's going to want to end her life, you know, point blank. And I've tried. <laughs> I am, I'm not even going to lie. But then it was just at that point, you know, I had to be able to smack myself back into reality and say, you know, look at how hard for you being one person, look how many people are joining together to try to make sure that your situation doesn't come out, your truth doesn't come out because, you know, that, that causes a lot of trouble, you know, um, and on those situations because they know I have receipts, DNA, my pictures, I'm splitting image of my dad, I might not look like it now because I haven't gained a lot of weight from depression. Um, but it, it was just like everything was sent to me to break me in so many different ways. And, you know, being able to deal with those things, I had to be able to understand, you know, everything happened for a reason. You know, um, things will take place in your life where you're really trying to, you know, trying to get what's going on, trying to be able to, you know, really accept, you know, things for really what they, what they are. And being able to do that, you know, um, it takes time, it takes patience, you know, to be able to uh, be able to understand and, and get that clarity that, you know, hey, 
things happen for a reason. You may not understand God's plan, but, you know, he has a plan through that. And, you know, going through those different things in my life, you know, I had to come accepting of things. I had to make choices that was very hard for me to do. I had to let go of people that I loved. You know, having to walk away from my children was the most hurtful thing that I had to go through. But it, it was just like, but I had to be able to respect that. You know, if people don't want to be in your life, you have to be able to set them free. You know, I, I wasn't a good mother. You know, I never tried to sit up here and say, you know, I, it doesn't come with a handbook, you know, and it was very toxic because I passed on the things that was passed on to me, I passed on to them. And that's why I always worked so hard when I found out this is narcissistic traits, you know, abusive traits, you know, and it was hard for me to place love in situations that I really, really experienced, you know, um, because my mom was the only one who really did that. But it was the point I turned my back on my mom. I was very vindictive with her, you know, and we didn't get um, into our, our tighter connection until after she passed, you know, um, and it, it was just fact is I never had a chance to meet my mom. She's still alive, but she doesn't want to have anything to do with me because the situation is too painful. And it's just like, I'm that m reminder of something, you know, uh, that a guy she was supposed to marry our first love and, you know, being able to, you know, deal with these different things and having to be able to accept, you know, really accept. It made me really look at life different, you know? I wasn't able to keep friends, you know, people thought it was cool, but it, it was just like, you know, you're having people that, you know, call themselves prince lovers and stuff like that, and there'll be, the, you know, a few ones that threaten my, threaten my life, you know, and it, it was very hurtful, it still is, you know, but I had to be able to allow myself to understand, I can't take that personal, you know, there's something wrong with them, there's nothing wrong with you, you this is something that you didn't choose, you know, um, but it, it's just like me living in my purpose. I had to be able to do that, you know, and keep it real with myself. And being able to see things for what they truly are, you know, it takes day by day, you know, and it's really hard, and that's where your strength really truly gets at. You don't realize that that strength comes not just from happiness, but overall most of the worst wounds that you've ever had to face in life. You know, being able to accept your truth, you know, being able to know you know, you, you've lived a vibration for so long and you had to flip that and being able to say, you know, everything you learned, everything you know about you was a whole lie. Now you have to flip that and then being able to um, move into a, a, a light or a vibration or a frequency to what you have healed up from. Not from what your parents have taught you, what would they make you fear, what did they make you hear or, you know, say, speak, see all these different things you had to reprogram yourself and it, it was it wasn't easy to do you know because at times it, it, it gets really heavy for me because it's just like you know people you know people get warnings from spirit all the time leave her alone you know I've noticed that different things has happened to people from them continue to mess with me you know what happened I always tell people you know hey you know I'm gonna tell you this but you know if <laughs> you wish some bad on me I, I can't you know, I can't be in the promise of that because it was a lot of people. Anytime they did something, karma always come back and tell me, hey, this is what happened to someone from messing with you. This is what happened when it went to you. And, you know, I had to be able to allow myself to see how biological family spoke of my dad. You know, I seen how detrimental it was when I lost two of my uncles because of that truth. You know, because they would have helped me out if they were here. You know. And it, it gets hard at times because it, it's just like situations when, when your dad is a part of that life that you are not accustomed to. You know, I had to be able to act a certain way. You know, I want to be able to, you know, have respect for my dad when, you know, I'm doing my videos or even for myself, you know, and he's, he's helped me do everything. You know, I talk to him all day, every day. Um, and that's a blessing that I'm glad God gave me where I can communicate with people from the other side. And, you know... Anytime I feel sad, Purple Rain comes on. You know, he always sings that to me when I'm sad. And that was a song that he made about me and him from his situation where he had to part ways from. You know, he was forbid to talk to me around that time. So that song kind of, you know, was placing towards the backstory of that. And um, being able to deal with that every day, it feels surreal, you know. And it got hurtful because there was so much love, even though I never felt that, really felt it, not never, but rarely felt that. Um, it was always snatched away from me, you know. And being able to deal with those things, you know, I had to be able to love myself. 
I had to be able to become my own best friend, have the best relationship with myself. That's where it all starts with, is with yourself. You know, I see how um, people would be towards me, people that I love, you know, uh, would treat me because of this situation. And it hasn't, really hasn't been easy, you know. Um, but I had to allow myself to know this is what makes you. This is what, you know, uh, a warrior goes through. You go through the worst situations. You have to be able to accept. You have to forgive the unforgivable. You know, um, you have to be able to let things go and accept them for what they truly are. You know, don't hold tight on uh, people to control outcomes, you know, because that only blocks you from your blessings, you know. And being able to use the things that family and you know, so-called family. I don't even really call my family. I'm like my dad's side of the family. You know, um, what they did, you know, in strength and numbers, you know, it was supposed to break me, but it, it was just at that point that angers them because how I wasn't supposed to make it this far. You know, I wasn't supposed to get, you know, towards this path of my, my life and being able to hold confidence in myself to speak on those things. So I always tell people, when you have a story, and your story may conclude, you know, include um, family that has done some really, you know, messed up harmful stuff for you. If this is your truth, you stand foot in it, you know. And the only time people get angry about it is if they know they painted a picture about you in a different way that contradicts, you know, what they say, you know. And I had to be able to allow myself to know, you know, my experience, anybody's opinion towards my experience doesn't change my experience. I know what I've gone through. You know, I used to get very in my feelings when people are like, I can just imagine. I said, no, you can't. I, I Please don't even try to put yourself in my shoes. You can't even lace them up that right way. And it wasn't um, trying to be lashing out at people, but you don't know the pain I've suffered, you know, because of this situation, you know. And being around energy, you know, and it just been thinking about the times where I've had contact with my dad and it was a messed up situation for me. Like I couldn't be stuck on missed opportunities because of how our communication was very controlled, you know, I'm very monitored. So, you know, going through these different things that allowed me to accept me for me, you know, I allow myself to be humble because it's like, regardless of who my dad is, I I'm not my dad, you know, I'm my own you know, my own vessel, but I'm very, I'm very honored for my dad to be who he is. You know, he's done a lot of beautiful things. You know, it helps me heal when I see how loved he is. You know, I see people with tattoos and, you know, naming their children after certain songs or, you know, having their tag names on one of his, you know, uh, songs or whatever. And it, it helps my healing process, you know. Um, you know, it's hard to keep friends when you when you're attached to something like that because it's like people are in and out of my life you know um there's a few people a few many they know my situation is and switched up on me you know and they still treat me the same and i always say that when i do this video i say i love y'all so much because y'all i mean y'all my aces because y'all really supported me you know through that and you know having to get through that is just like you know, you have to be able to build yourself on a strong foundation. You don't realize how that pain gives purpose, you know, and it can be very prosperous if you're allowing yourself to make those big decisions, you know, being able to speak on that, you know, because it's just like with my situation, it's humbled me, it's strengthened me, you know, it made me very dedicated towards my growth, dedicated to be able to know, to see how my situation can inspire somebody else you know we go through things that we are not proud to think about you know you don't want to project that because you don't know if people are going to judge you you don't know if people are going to change the way they see you you know and I tell people if, if they love you you that wouldn't matter you know if they really are there for you you're still the same person you just you you know you don't told them that the pot the plot twist on your life but it, it was with me it was very hard for that you know and being able to get through it day by day, you know, I, I said it gets better with time. You know, you heal through moments of really like meditating, being able to honor yourself. You know, um, the situation has made me love myself a lot more because it's just the way I was brought up. I always was a people pleaser, you know, but I, I also was very brutally blunt at times too, didn't care how I hurt 
other people by speaking truth because I always felt like thank God <laughs> that was like my, my nose is hitting um, hitting that God gift but you know going through that you know having to be able to understand those different things that I had to face you know and being able to understand like I felt alone you know it's just like my children were everything to me I lost them you know uh, not having anybody to go to for support because you know my mom's ex-husband made sure he turned everybody's back against me you know and being able to do that uh, it would be at times where I would sit and cry like how would you do that to your own child you would you know you would dish your child and your grandkids over your wife to make sure she lived good because she had a standard to have. You know, she wanted to be seen in, you know, in a, uh, in a, a illusionist vibration way. So being able to do that, I had to be able to forgive, and it was hard. You know, it really had to be hard, especially um, when you knew, you know, you always wanted to know where you came from, where you looked how you look like, you know, who did you look like, or whose attitude did you get, what genes did you, you know, whose genes took over, and all those different things went through my head, and, you know, being able to do that, um, now I can look back, and it, I have to be able to tell myself when I mean I'm heavy in my feelings, and really heavy, you know, look at how many things that has been placed against you to destroy you, tear you apart, you know, you don't talk to your, your, your biological mom because it was like a toxic relationship her and my dad had. You know, she was 16, my dad was 18. Um, being able to, you know, I have her complexion, but I look like him. And um, being able to do that, I, I had to swallow that pill because, I, you know, I always wonder, did my mom love me? Did she ever, you know, uh, you know, think of me? Different things like that. And it was beautiful just to be able to find out who my family was, who I looked like, you know. And it was crazy because I looked like my, my dad, then my grandfather, John, and then my Uncle Johnny at the same time. It was like, we're all twins. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's just like going through this. It was just like, you know, guys, like, it's, it's time to tell your story, but change it. Tell it from, it's like not change it, but change your perspective of how you've been healing to be able to, be, you know, become okay with this you know and it's just like how am I going to be okay I got you know I got people trying to kill me and jump like that in any kind of way just to make sure I don't come out you know and they did everything they possibly could you know regardless of you know doing it illegally you know but it, it was just a thing that I have to understand you know even though I can't be on my understanding I have to be on God's understanding you know um being able to move forward without any regret you know allowing myself to chase my dreams knowing there is no dream too big that I can't I can't connect to if I feel like I can do that and work hard and be on my um my my what's the word I'm looking for determination or motivation towards that you know it allowed me to see how powerful I really am you know losing my mom my adopted mom uh her passing away not having my mother in my life uh, and my children I don't talk to my children or my granddaughter you know and I had you know going through financial struggles you know they tried to bind me to that too you know had suicidal thoughts try to bind me to that too um, but then I had to allow myself to know my, my purpose is is meaningful you know my my person within myself matters I have a, a job here to do you know, to be able to help myself as I help other people, you know, and being able to look at your situation, because there's a lot of times you go through things, battles that people don't understand, battles that people don't even know about, and you irritate people that want to live a lie and try to place bad on you because they know that truth is too powerful, and you have to still be keep going, you know. I can't allow myself to constantly keep looking, you know, behind my shoulder uh, over over my shoulder to worry about is somebody going to kill me today? Am I going to walk out and I'm going to get shot up? You know, different stuff like that that goes through my mind because I've seen the different things that I've gone through of how people are really trying to, you know, because they don't want that to come out, you know. And that was something that I had to really digest and being able to understand this is, you know, this is my life. You know, why, why does it have to be this way? I didn't ask for this, you know. Um... And the way I say it, you know, at times it made me feel bad for saying that because I never want my dad to ever feel like I regret him being my dad. I never will. 
you know um but it was just like going through this I never thought just because of who I was related to will have people acting the way they act towards me never want me to shine never want me to you know be happy never want me to be able to have a come up no matter how hard I work because it's just like anything that I have that comes in my life that is a huge blessing I'll earn that I worked hard for that you know I didn't get it because I was Prince's daughter you know it's because I worked hard for it you know and I had to really really humble myself you know and going through these different things has not been easy it hasn't because there's days that I sit here and I just try to understand why does it have to be this way you know why do I have people that I really love and care for is doing any everything you know to try to block my blessings for me if you you can't go along with me you want to make sure I don't go either you know and that that's a hurtful situation to go through it's like where you really trying to step out you know and I always just when I used to pop off on people I was like how would you feel if this was you you know mainly to the people that they're trying to do this how would you feel if it was you and I had to be able to think they wouldn't have been able to make it as far as I have for the people that have done this to me they wouldn't have been able to make it you know I, I made videos about how people will place their fears on you of what they fear they know they wouldn't be able to live through they thought the same thing about you but I had to become my own best friend I had to know even though I was alone and I was cut off to myself I was never really alone you know I was very divinely protected I was loved you know a blessing to be able to you know if I didn't have any friends you know here I always talk to my family and you know and being able to do those different things and just being able to say I'm blessed to do that I say I'm blessed you know and try my hardest not to complain and try to be grateful for all the things that I have you know even when it's hard to be grateful you know um, being able to see how my change can really trigger other people on trying to hurt me and I had to allow myself to take that power and transmute that into love and, and take off you know and do that so when you're going through different things you know, never allow yourself to be, you know, silenced because, you know, people don't want you speaking on the different things that you've gone through, you know, because, you know, when my situation is all about, you know, external validation, how would you be seen? What do people know this? And it was just like, you know, this is my life. I ain't going to lie for nobody. <laughs> I ain't going to cover up for that. Whatever you want to say about me is what you what you can say, because it's just like when I, when I look at my situation and where people speak ill of me is maybe because you don't like the truth that I'm telling or you don't like the fact that my trigger from you is because I'm changing I'm healing you know I allowed myself to be manipulated I allowed myself to always prove loyalty to people that weren't even loyal to me you know I accommodated people that had no problem with inconveniencing me you know belittling me in front of people just so their, their stories that they said about me matched up on how I reacted to it, not realizing I was being gaslighted. You know, there was lies that was projected on me to be able to match up for what they were saying. Now, it's just like when I look at myself and they're saying, if it disturbs my peace, I'm not going to bother with you. If you can't respect me, I'm not going to bother with you. If you want to be bitter, be bitter. If you want to talk about me, talk about me. You know, I know my truth. I'm not going to worry about what people say about me like that you know because there'll be so many people that really know me personally even the people I don't talk to anymore will hopefully say the same thing um that I was very loving you know very caring you know encourage people you know you know give each other that uplift when it truly needed it you know because that's what I needed in my life that's what I wanted you know and I had to be able to instill that into myself you know embody that within myself and that really shows you how strong you are you can go through things and it's just like you say, um, I don't know if I can keep going on like this. I don't know how much I can take. I, I can't do this. And God's like, yes, you can. You know, see how many different things you have overturned, overcome on things that you felt like it was impossible to heal from. You know, impossible for you to get over. You know, impossible for you to let go. And it was at that point where I had to let people go. And there were some people that felt like, oh, she can't make it without me. And I had to be at that vibe like, are you oxygen? <laughs> you know, am I really going to need you to survive? I was born here by myself. I will leave here by myself. You know, and it was just like everything that that was sent to destroy me was the actual the actual thing to make me like a beast in my power. You know, and being able to love myself and just being able to. You know, there's a time and a place for when, you know, God wanted me to talk about different things like this. So I'm just like, 
look this is what I got started with you know this is my introduction you know on my on my channel um and it was like I talked about this in December and it was just like I'm tired of talking about it but it was just like you have to be able to talk about it from the views you are now you know came a long way since then which is true I came a long way I always tell people there's days that I, I, you know my armor falls off you know that thundercat the calls come back you know there'll be different times that people are like Rosalind I commend you for your strength and I had to be able to tell them, you know, when you only have strength and strength in God to be able to rely on, you play heavy on that. You play really heavy on that. Because I used to look at God like, you really don't like me, do you? And not realizing that pain was love. You know, a lot of times God will, will put tough love on you and it will break you just to build you back up again. Being able to show you the true intentions of people that are around you, that you would do everything in your, your life where I mean there's so many different things I've done for people it didn't expect things back and when they found out about the situation it was having people sent my way to try to put some black magic and shit on me you know and that, that was really hurtful you know and, and seeing how that is but then it's just like when I had to really step back and really look at it for what it truly was you you know you have to be sitting on some power when there's so many different people feeling like strength in numbers is going to stop you and that's why I say in my videos, there's a lot of them that get that that warning saying, hey, you need to stop. You need to leave her alone. This is going to start coming back to you. Whatever you're putting on me is, is what you're going to be living by. And I was just like, the heck, I'm only one person. You know, why is that happening to me? Because it's showing you how powerful you are. People don't want you to be sharing your gifts with nobody. People don't want you talking about some stuff they know they don't went on TV and claimed it wasn't true and it contradicts what I say. You know, and all those different things, not to hold hatred out there, you know, for my aunts and uncles for lying, you know, about my situation. But I had to be able to forgive that because I said, this is, that's their war. That's not my battle. That's between them and God. And I had to allow myself to do that because it, it's like, I seen how my anger kept disturbing my peace. I see how me holding a grudge with other people that will hide, throw a rock and hide the hand will really you know take me off course because anything that is coming your way where it's negative or people want you to second guess yourself they're trying to distract you you know they try to distract you no matter what if they oh I'm not doing this and doing that people have a thing about throwing a rock and hiding their hand or they you know when they see that you can't be easily manipulated or you set boundaries all of a sudden you become crazy it become difficult to work with and I said it's just at this from this situation that's what really took me there when I see that you know your your views and vibes will change with me over something that I have no, nothing to do with I'm gonna just cut you off you know it's just seeing you know send you about your way and send love and light towards you and really wish the best for you because there would be times where I would be very angry when I never wish something on somebody and then when they find out you know all of a sudden you start acting funny towards me or trying to find what's your, what's your what north note what's this what's that and i'll tell people if i don't give you that permission universe is not going to give you information for you to be one step towards you know ahead of me you know i don't speak on things that i'm planning to do i move in silence that way you know i had to learn from those different things don't be you know even when you're happy and you're on this vibration of something new to you that brings you joy that brings you an uplift that makes you look at yourself different you know, there's going to be many people who are not going to be happy about that. So they're going to try to block you, you know. So that's the reason why I move the way I move. You know, I really don't speak on things. You know, I know a lot of my enemies come here because they're hoping I will say something. So they'll find something to use against me to block me in some kind of way. You know, and I had to be able to allow myself to even know I'm still protected. You know, you can't stop what God has for anyone, you know. Um, and there's consequences to every choice you have. So it, it was just like going through those things. When I tell you, it, it made me so much stronger because I had so many things that was sent against me. And being able to be able to face that fact, you know, and just having to heal. And those are the things that, you know, they always tell you, you can't heal where you got sick at. God proved that point that I had no choice but to. You know, that's where your strength really comes from when you have to be around people that don't like you. You have to be around people that want to see you gone permanently. You know, like you, you want to be asking for God's Wi-Fi. You want to be a hashtag. You know, different things like that. And I had to be able to, leave, you know, hold my head high and being able to know if it's my fate to leave, it will be my fate. But if I'm protected, 
on certain reasons and stuff like that. And I got to be able to move, you know, I got to be able to do that and have full confidence in myself within God and faith in myself within God that I'm going to be okay. You know, being on this road has not been easy for me. I've seen how different people have really, you know, really acted towards me, you know, or, oh, you're attention seeking. No, I'm not. <laughs> you know, but if God tells me to, you know, talk about this, I got to be able to do that. He always said, I'm like, why? You know, he's like, I got my reasons. You just need to go ahead and do it because you, you look at your situation differently now. You know, even though this is a painful situation, it made me just be able to look at life where, you know, you're not going you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea you know there are going to be people out there that fear you and intimidate you they're going to be intimidated by you you know but that doesn't mean you have to change how you feel about yourself what you know in your heart is what's true regardless if people don't don't know let god show them you know you're going to have different things where you know if if there's something that's coming your way that's really going to rock you like have you in your emotions make you want to crawl and, and become silent when they're when God's telling you you need to roar you know you need to roar like it, you know they want to be able to hear you from one state all the way to the other side you're on the north side of the hemisphere they want to hear you on the east side and you hold that power within yourself these are the situations that showed me how resilient I am what kind of power I hold what I had to allow myself to keep going no matter what is taking place in my life what is going on about me what, what's been taken out my life there's going to be far more better that's going to instill into that. Whatever I had to part ways with, if it's meant to, you know, God will bring it right back, you know. But he had to be able to put me in a situation to really show you what people's true intentions were towards you to the core, you know. And you had to be able, that, that was that truth serum that I, it was hard for me to really just become, you know, one with. So, you know, going through all those different things, you know, I had to stay humble. You know, I was just so happy. Oh, my, oh my God, you know, Prince is my dad. Ooh, ooh, you know, <laughs> crazy stuff like that. But then it was just like, I, I see how people would really act towards me and just felt like, you know, when you're on the outside looking in, oh, it's easy, you know. If you're his daughter, this and this and that, you know, you, you're an heir and this and this and that, you know. And it's just like you, when people are people. You know, and they feel like they're entitled to certain things that you don't deserve. You know, they will do any and everything to make sure you kept silent. You know, I'm a loose end. I'm a liability. You know, and it, it's just the, the when when my situation it rolls deep, it really rolls deep because it's, it's like law officials and you know, and connected in this situation that's trying to keep me silent. You know, but it was at that point where God used that exact thing. To bring me out and being able to allow myself to really, you know, work on me, heal on me. But while I'm doing that, use my experience to be able to enlighten somebody else. You know, you go through many battles. And a lot of times we feel like we, we can't take this anymore. We can't live through this anymore. You know, you don't realize you're the prime example for your enemies. You know, they bring narcissistic people in your life because you are that worst nightmare on that. Because they can put anything on you. But if you have that power and that courage within yourself, like your family knows you have, like your ancestors know you have, like God and your guides know you have, they know you're going to be able to get through this. And they will put you through the toughest experiences to being able to show people no matter what you're facing, it can always get better if you allow yourself to. Because I see how, you know, it used to be a thing for me, the way people try so hard and break the neck to try to block me, try to, you know, make me look a certain way because they want me to be a certain way you know or or put paying money to do black magic on me why don't you use that same energy to hold yourself accountable for the suffering you placed in your life you know being honest with yourself and keeping it real you know being able to you know when you can force all this stuff on somebody god is not going to bless you when you're trying to block somebody else's blessings, you, 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 you abandon, you neglect what you got coming towards you when you're more focused on somebody else's life. And that's what I have. You know, a lot of surveillance cameras, you know, and I got angry, you know, with those situations. It's just like, why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> why don't you go focus on you instead of not focusing on me? Because I'm still focused on me. You know, whatever you're sending towards my way, it transmutes that and gives me power. And I always tell people that. You know, anything you're doing to me, they try to trigger me or try to hurt me. You know, you're giving me your power. 
you're you're doing that and I had to be able to take my power back for my this situation you know with my my mom's ex-husband his wife her her children you know with my dad's part of the family and different people that that was connected with him them them too you know um, and it was the fact is I lost a lot, you know, in my life that, you know, I, I don't, I'm even shocked myself. I made it this far, but then there was something in my soul to say, nah, <laughs> this ain't going to be something that's going to take you out. This is going to be something that's going to take you up. You know, it's going to elevate you in so many different ways. This is, you're going to see yourself in a different way, you know, and it's just a blessing that, you know, people that has been with me for a long time, you see me grow, you know, seeing my, my bad moments, you know, see me where, you know, I, I would just be medically numb from smoking weed, you know, all the time. I mean, when I tell you I, I, I had to deal with that, you know, that helped me cope through my nervous breakdowns and stuff like that because it was just like, nah, you know, uh, being able to digest that, you know, the last thing image of my dad I had to see him laying dead in front of his elevator where people were just parading that picture around by people he loved that loved him you know and it was just like you, you didn't that was no kind of respect that you want to show that picture like that so it was very traumatizing to me you know and going through all those different things it really made me look at life it gave me such a different vibration of a view gave me a new vision on life be telling myself there's no no matter what things that people try to take away from me no matter how much people try to you know lie on me and say I'm lying or whatever or try to call me a clout chaser or trying to seek attention I know what's in me because they know that's not what I'm doing but that's how they want me to be seen as and I had to be okay with that you know because I always used to go out my way to really prove a point but it's just like if you get me you get me you don't you don't if you don't believe me then that's fine you know you do believe me thank you you know if you, even if you don't support me you're still supporting me by showing me what I need to do within myself working on myself and that's what we do you know with us being hey okas we we connect with people and there's a lot of people that stay in that chapter of our lives where they they go with us to the next journey or continue to go down that journey and a lot of times you know things will get in the way insecurities will get in the way jealousy envy all those different things but it's bringing up to the surface what we need to work on you know comparison competition you know uh, focus on somebody else's path and neglecting my own different stuff like that and I, I mean those are the situations I really had to go through you know really really had to go through and you know those different people that really looked up to that you know it's just like dad you know this and this and that and I said it's not easy it's not <laughs> you know and um but I had to be able to make my life my life you know um being able to you know say dad oh, you know I wonder if my dad's proud of me and you're like heck yeah he's proud of you you know and just being able to live with that you know um and being able to express the situations I go through from day to day. You know, I can't say how I'm gonna feel for the end of the week, but I had to be able to take day by day and just be able to handle it the best way I can. Even though it, it, it could be a struggle with me not trying to fall apart, you know, I had to be able to do that. You know, and people are like, well, Rosalyn, you're so strong because of this and this and that. I had no choice but to be strong. I have my weak moments, I have my negative moments, I have days where I hate everyone. You know, be, be ready to, you know, just start making house calls to certain people because of my situation on how bad this this is emotionally and mentally spiritually has scarred me but you know being able to do what i do on my on my my videos my podcast being able to share love with people you know being op open towards that even though it's uncomfortable to talk about but it's just like god like you got to be accustomed of being uncomfortable you know, it's not easy to go through different things where you have to stand in the shadows, you know, um, where people don't want your light to be seen, you know, because different things and their insecurities, you know. And I had to be allowing myself to tell people, don't don't ever be feared to say things. Now, if you know what you have gone through and it was actually true, you speak on that. Yeah, it's going to hurt some people, especially, you know, if they don't make stories up about certain things or, you know, you know, family, hey, this is family stuff. You keep it in the family. But, you you know, the, those situations be the exact situations that, that don't traumatize people. But those are the situations also where I tell people everybody got a story. Everybody is going through different things that can really rock the socks off of you. 
you know, but there will be a lot of things that you and only you have overcome that so many people would have ran from. You know, when you were that one that there was chosen, anointed, or whatever, you're, you're the generational curse warrior. You know, it's not going to be easy for you. You're going to have family that's going to be ready to annihilate you because the fact is this is what they have grown up and came accustomed to, and it needs to stay that way. You know, you're going to have different people that God, you know, devil going to send your way because he knows through God that your situation is going to show God was dripped all up in that. And that's what they don't want to happen. And it's just like, well, my situation is, is just like, you know, it, it's one of those things because it's just like if it comes out, it ain't going to be pretty for some people just because of the things they've done and said and how they moved, the way they moved. It was very illegal. But... I had to be able to allow myself to focus on me. I can't focus on wanting to, what can't wait to see the karma that hits my aunts and uncles and my, my stepmom and, you know, her, her husband or, well, my mom's ex-husband and his wife and family, you know, just, I, I was at that point like, oh, I can't wait to see God serve you. I was like, I don't wish no revenge, but I will sit right in front of that karma smack down, you know, and allow my, not myself to know where I'm at is not my permanent duty station. You know, the situation I'm in you know, with, when it comes to poverty, that's not going to be my permanent station. These situations is really going to take me somewhere. These are the different things that I've worked hard to be able to get to. You know, because like I said before, I don't want people thinking, oh, you know, she got this because she's Prince's daughter or she did this because of Prince and this and this and that. No, it's about what I earned within myself. You know, what I had to be able to accept, what I had to be able to let go of how I had to be able to move and just have faith in God even when I didn't know what direction he was sending me in I had to be able to do that I found out so many different spiritual gifts that I've had because of this situation I seen how much strength that I have in myself when all I felt was wounds all I felt was sorrow pain you know um hating myself for a lot of things not having love I put so much love in other people when they didn't give me that love back and when I allowed myself to grow and I allowed myself to be assertive, you know, and being able to say no, if I don't want to connect with somebody, I have the right to do that. If you want me to do something and I don't feel entitled to do it, I can do that, you know, and I had to be able to be okay because it was hard for me to be able to say no. It was hard for me to be able to, you know, you, you're not going to be liked if you keep up boundaries, you know, people are going to be mad at you if you, you know, you don't allow them to walk over you. Now it's just like, you know, if you can't come correct with me, I'm not going yeah, I'm not going to come entitled to where I got to, you know, go ahead and reply to that. You know, you know, no, no, what do they say? How do they say it? No reaction is a reaction or no response is a response, you know, and on those different things. So it's just like when I allowed myself to be very stern with that, all of a sudden I became, you know, it was really bad, you know, because I won't allow people to manipulate me. I don't allow people to gaslight me. I can speak cordial to you and still get my point off. I will stay on my ground. You know, I'm not going to allow people to walk over me. I'm not going to allow people to disrespect me. You know, I always tell people, you can't come correct to me. Don't come at all. Don't do that. You know, because I'm, I'm not that person that throw a rock and hide the hand. I throw a brick and make you sit there. You know, and just be like, yep, I did it. You know, but it allowed me to be in that point where I'm not going to allow people to take me out of my character. I used to do that. You know, I can speak on different things, but if I know it's like, you know, it's becoming a habit because you're, you know, there's personal issues with you, I have to still be able to allow myself to understand they're in a world with themselves. They're just projecting that on you. They don't like the fact that you're healing, you're changing, you're okay with accepting the things that you did. You know, being able to understand, like I tell people, I'm not, you know, regardless of what I say that people have done to me, you know, I know I've done my dirt too. I'm not going to just blame, I'm not in that victim mentality. I refuse to. When I noticed that I was when I first started, you know, I was in that victim mentality because it was like, oh, they did this to me and they did that. And I mean, they really did. But I had to be able to allow myself to tell myself like that higher self within me, you are not a product of your circumstances. You're not a victim to your, your circumstances. These are the different things that gave you that turning point to be able to make your own truth stand forward and be stern about it and being able to do that. But, you know, like I said, it was something I really didn't want to talk about, you know, because I was supposed to be doing my, my uh, tarot cards and God, God was like, no, you can get back to that. I need you to do this today. So I'm like, okay. 
you know um because it's just like sitting with myself and really just allowing myself to really see things for what they are you know when we face our truth we all got burdens that we got to bear you know there's a lot of things that's hard for us to digest to be able to accept a lot of times people do so many hurtful things to you it's hard for you to forgive you know because it, it's like when my situation when i looked at it and being able to forgive people is like i'm condoning what they did it's like no nah, you deserve your peace you don't want to sit up here and be holding yourself on all the blessings that could be welcoming into you and your vibration by staying mad at people because you're doing exactly what they want you know they want you to be angry they want you to be able to lose seat you know they want you to be able to do that and, you know, when I look at my situation, and it's funny to me because it's like everything that my mom's ex-husband taught me, you know, when it comes to situations like that, I end up projecting that out. He's like, you know, when you know somebody really did something to you, when you meet up with them and you start popping off, you're allowing that person to know that what they did to you still affects you. You know, but when you stay calm and control your, your emotions, that scares somebody because they know you know what you know, what they did, you know. And you stay quiet about it. That will disturb the mess out of somebody. And that's letting you know you took your power back. Because it was so many different things that I focused on that they did to me. You know, different things of when I went through a physical, emotional, and mental and verbal abuse growing up. You know, because of this situation. But now when I stay strong with it, you know, and when they see that I'm not going to be that pushover, that, that, that intimidates and I had to be able to be, you know, I don't want you to be scared of me, but you you know, you need to make it right with God. You don't got to, you know, you can't make it right with me. Well, you can if you're on that reel. But it, it's just like people, it, it's the mind, the, the 3D, the greed, the money, you know, they won't do right. And I had to be able, okay with that. It's all about money to them. You know, no matter how much it is like what I went through, money is what's important to them. It's not me. You know, they hated my dad, so they hate me too, you know. But going through this, you you know, it, it really, when I say I'm, I'm very blessed, you know, and a lot of times it's hard for me to <clears throat> say that at times when you're going through stuff. But it's just like, don't look at the beautiful things that came out of a very tragic situation, you know, um, being becoming my own best friend, instilling all that love in me, not allowing myself to take it personal. You know, I can speak on different things that, you know, I, I'm addressed. You know, people want to be, you know, uh, what, what they call that, combative. You know, allow yourself, hey, be stern. I, I said what I said, and that's it. You know, I, I don't have to deal with that. And I'm allowing myself to be able to know, yes, that's what I had to go through. Yes, because you, you're not allowing yourself to cater to nobody else's needs. It's not catering to yours. You're not going to allow yourself to convenience somebody that has no problem with inconveniencing you. You know, allowing yourself to not be bothered about how other people think of you or what people have said bad about you. Because, you know, when you're standing in your power, you become difficult. You become crazy. You know, you become that one that, you know, other people want to be able to be seen, have them being seen as, you know, uh, a victim. You know, a lot of things that come back to me is just like, you know, when they see, you know, they talk every, every time. I'm, I'm the thing that's just constantly in, in on that subject. It's a subject arousal. How are we going to bring her down? Like, Pinky, we're going to take over the world. You know, it'll be one of those different things. And, you know, it, that'll allow people to know because it's just like I said, I don't want to be, you know, spotlighting people and showing how their character is it's just like you you can tell you know because I know I'm you know people talk about me people say things about me but if you go and look at my videos you know I look at this situation like I'm not gonna talk bad about you you know eventually you know whatever you do in the dark it's gonna come to light you that's something like right here what I'm going through oh that don't last too long even though it lasts for a minute it's not gonna last too long you know and that is gonna be initial healing for everybody you know, even my enemies, it's going to be an enlightenment moment for you because it's not easy. What we go through is not easy, you know, because a lot of times we feel weak. We feel like, you know, we can't conquer different things. And it's just like if you really didn't go through these things, you would really see how much you intimidate a lot of people just because your light is so bright. You keep glowing anyway. You know, you keep doing you. You keep being who you truly are and be able to be your own beautiful representation of yourself. Regardless of what people say, say or think about you. As long as you see yourself as something. And it's something beautiful or something handsome inside. It don't matter what other people say. Oh, they don't like me. Why am I even caring? <laughs> you know, what, what is it that you're doing for me? You know, and even though people want to bring you back, you're going to deal with a lot of spiritual oppressors. You know, because it's just the fact is when you're, when you're weak like that, why are they trying to convince you of that? 
got to think about it that way. You know, why would people convince you of something that you're not? That's only how they feel about themselves. I said, you can call me everything up under the sun, you know, not my name or the child, you know, or the child of God. And I really still know who I am. That's how you feel about me. Okay, that's really how you feel about yourself. But okay, people start saying, Dad, why every time I got to talk to you, you got to say something about her? It, you you know, because I, I noticed when I look at her video, she really ain't saying nothing about you. She sees you as a good thing that happened. That was a blessing in disguise. That I've, what I've gone through, what I am going through, is a blessing in disguise. You know, I ain't gonna talk bad about nobody. Pretty soon, people gonna see who you are. You know, and see like, oh, they the bitter person. Oh, they intimidated by. Her. Oh God, they really jealous of her. I can see why, cause she's staying in her power. You know, she her her demeanor, how her intellect, how she you know she articulates herself is really something that you you don't like. You ain't used to. You know what me, but. Being able to say, you know, just to wrap this up, because I didn't know this video going to be that long. But, you know, I see everything as a blessing to me. You know, no matter what I've gone through, what I've faced, what I have to accept, this has really humbled me. It has gave me blessings to be able to understand when, you know, I used to ask God, why me? You know, this is so hurtful. I never had a chance to be around my dad. I never had a chance to be able to do this. I talked to him so many times and he really couldn't tell me anything, you know, about that because it was like you couldn't talk to me no more if you tell who you are to me, you know. And those are the hurtful situations that, you know, I had to be able to, you know, have, especially, you know, the most of it is when my dad passed away and I couldn't even be there, you know. It was just only a blessing I can say, you know. I talked to him two days before he passed away, you know, and I had to be able to hold on to that, you know. So it is when you're going through different things in your life, know you are so much stronger than you give yourself credit for, you know, because when you're going through different things, it really shows you, you know, how were you able to make it? How were you able to overcome so many things that felt impossible that you would never get over, you would never get through? You know, and that shows you where you have to start having that confidence in yourself that God sees in you, that he know you can do, your guys can do, your ancestors, your family that watches over you and protect you. You know, you go through different things because you're going to be your own trendsetter. You know, you're not following to be the other people drums. You can't follow a crowd because you get lost in a crowd. You just, sometimes we have to go on a journey that's very lonely, you know. But when it comes to that point, this is at that season, you're, you're letting go of everything that's no longer serving you. Letting the people go that is no longer resonating with that vibe. You know, don't allow yourself to backwash yourself. Not backwash, but water yourself down. That was so nasty, backwash. <laughs> water yourself down for other people to be able to fit in. You're not supposed to fit in. If they can't meet you where you at, they ain't, trying, they ain't no need to be there in the first place. You know, everybody's not promised to stay in your life. But you have to be able to appreciate what they have taught you. Even the most worst things, you know, they have taught you. That's why it's just like I tell people all the time, especially when I'm here, and I talk about my toxic relationship. You know, I ended right around the time my dad passed. And I would talk hateful of him because that man put me through so much. I put him through a lot, too. But now it's just like I'm grateful for all the things he put me through because it's like I always tell him I'm grateful for what you put me through. He thought I was being funny. But I said I'm being serious. You know, because I would never allow anybody else to put me through the things you put me through. But you taught me so much on the red flags I had to be able to be aware of. Even with other people, I had to be able to notice those red flags. And I tell people all the time, when you meet somebody, you know, and you're really trying to feel like, is this the one for me? Or is this a person I can trust? Is this a person that, you know, is, you know, this is a person that's keeping it real with me? They always tell you conversate for one hour and that person will tell you so much about themselves, just about how they say things how they you know go about it how they look at it you know how they project things on you and you, you can really start seeing that and especially if you forgave a person and they were very toxic or narcissistic or whatever towards you and you meet somebody and it brings back up that situation with somebody after you don't clearly let it go that's that red flag that's why a lot of times see I must be on a subject because God like that oh Jesus okay when you're in a situation and a lot of times we get mad saying, I wish I never met that person. Because it's like with my situation, I'm like, oh, oh, don't remind me. I used to date this person or I had a child by this person. And I had to stop doing that. You know, and it's just like, this is what you wanted at that time. Yeah, touche. You know, this is what you wanted at that time. So never feel like the people that you, you, you connected with or never feel resentment because you love that person strong. You have a good heart. And a lot of times you have to understand when we have good hearts like that 
and you're an empath, it feels like you got idiot rid all over your head. Oh, that person's easy to control. Oh, this person's e easily manipulate. This person's easy to get over because they use your kindness for weakness. And when you when you allow yourself to see what that issue is, you holding on to people that you know you can walk out their life and they on the next thing hopping. You know, or you know, when you when they needed you is when they needed you as a supply. It don't matter who it is. And then when they got what they wanted, you know, you were back being the villain again. You know, and they're doing this. And then you're gonna start allowing yourself to know. I need to know my worth. I need to put that love in myself because when you put love in yourself, that lets you know you ain't gonna cater, a tone, or you know, or, or or entertain anything. You know, that is not resonating in your highest good. And you're going to go through things like that. Because you're going to get to a point in life where I am right, right where I am now. Even though I'm not exactly where I want to be. Even though I don't like where I'm supposed to be. You know, at this point. But I know this is beneficial towards my needs. I know it's beneficial for my growth. You know, being able to understand me on different levels. Seeing different parts of myself that's being revealing, revealing to me. And this is at that, that time of the year. You know, where this is that season where you're letting go of people that are no longer resonating with you. You're standing in your power. You ain't dimming that mess for nobody. You know, you're allowing yourself to be in, in a loud, you know, loud vibration when people want you to play small. You know, they want you to keep that mask on because that's a persona. That's a facade they place on you. You know, and this is that, that thing. Like, I, I love my face. I love who I am. You know, inside and out, I'm not a perfect person. You know, my past is not who I am today. My past has made me a better person. I'll tell people too. I was like, shoot, I don't care about, you know, I talked about different things I went through. Yeah, I used to dance for like about seven, eight years. You know, I used to, you know, swirl on the pole, you know, like dance now. I'll make money moves, whatever. You know, I used to do that. I was addicted to opiates. I smoked, I drank, you know, self-mutilated, different stuff like that. Had suicidal tendencies, tried to kill myself a few times, died a few times, you know, and I went through those things. And, you know, because I was always taught, you know, what if you become famous? You know, what if you become this? And I always used to always wonder about why they kept on asking that. Even though y'all were the one who put me in certain situations for me to have to be able to go through those things. But it was like me being able to, this is what I was. I don't, I'm not shameful of that. These are the different things I had to do. I had to take care of my children, you know. And it was at that point I had to make sacrifices for my children. The only thing it was, I wanted a woman of the night. And, you know, there's no disrespect or disregard or anything like that towards people that have to do that. We all do what we have to do, you know. And it was just on mine. I did that. I had to have two or three jobs. There'll be days that I went without sleep. There'll be days I went to bed hungry because I had to make sure that my kids ate. You know, I had to be able to do a, be, you know, hustling to make sure I kept my lights on and stuff like that. You know, so my situation really humbled me. And not worrying about who's going to pass judgment on me because everybody got, everybody got dirt, you know. But a lot of people are not going to reveal that because there are some people that, you know, it's private. You don't really have to do that. But in my situation, I allowed myself to project this because this is like, you're not going to make money off of my pain you ain't gonna make money off of my struggle if I'm already saying to this you know people you know there's a lot of things that when you when you become famous and stuff like that they don't want you to know different things that they went through you don't want them to know and I mean everybody's entitled to what they feel but with me I'm allowed myself to be open with it because I see so many people around me are wanting people to see them in a certain light they're, they're making their self look a certain way or act a certain way because they don't want people to see who they truly are you know, but with my situation, when I can see that I done upgraded <laughs> from where I used to be, I'm not going to be shameful of what I did. You know, I'm not going to be shameful of the things that I've done. I mean, there will be different things I'm not proud of what I did, but I learned from that. That was the experience that I had to go through to be able to rise myself up to where I need to be at. And I work on that every single day. You know, so it's just like when I speak on things, I'm speaking on it because these are the different things that I'm guided to be able to talk about. Different things where it inspires me to become a better person. I'm only in competition with myself. I'm not, comp you know, in competition with no other people, even when they put me in that. I'm not going to block your blessings because you're so, you know, custom to block blocking minds. I want to see everybody shine. But I tell people, I tell my enemies, I'm not going to wish happiness on you based off of the suffering you're trying to place me in. That's not one thing I'm going to do. But I'm going to send love to you. I'm going to give healing vibes towards your way because you need to heal. You know, whatever you got going on where you put a place on me has nothing to do with me. It has a lot to do with you. You know, and I had to be able to be understanding about that. I used to live in rage, anger. You know, why 
did my mom's ex-husband block me from being around my dad you know my dad loved me you know but it was just all about his persona how he was in the world you know how he was this and that this and that but it was all about jealousy it was all about envy greed all this stuff all they seen my dad was dollar signs I was the pawn you know for them to get money you know and it, it was a hurtful situation because it was like it got back to him that I, I didn't care for him. I was angry because he gave me up. You know, he's all living a life and I have to be in the shadows. And that really wasn't it. My dad loved me. He did everything he constantly, you know, did. He always say money can't buy you happiness, but it'll pay for the search. And that's exactly what he was doing when it came to me. He didn't know amount of money he was doing. He wouldn't push out just to make sure he seen me. And he never got a chance to do that. You know, so it, it was just like they didn't grow up with good parenting skills from what they have taught, told me. It was very abusive on both sides. But it was just to be able to see a, a, a man that has done so much in the world except being able to be a father. You know, that was one thing they said, we want to be able to have control over that. And my dad paid dearly for that, you know. Because it's like when I see, hear that, it's, it's like I hear the song Thieves in the Temple because that's what that was about, you know. Uh, going through those different things, you know, I had to be able to really see love in, in a, a, you know, a, a non-existent way because I didn't think love like that can exist. But it, it's just like, even though they tried to separate me and his connection like that, because it's like a twin connection, you know, I used to tell my mom I have nightmares, you know, I was my daddy's twin sister at one time and I passed away and now I'm here and he's my daddy you know I used to say that at four years old and my mom was like what the heck is going on with you you ain't have a twin brother I said yes I do you know and now when I look at pictures of me and my dad at the same as that age we are twins like splitting images of that and you know going through so many different things so many different things um, allows me to stay humble be very grateful you know knowing that if I can inspire somebody else you know to speak up for yourself don't allow you know the things that you've done in the past hinder you from being a better person because it's just like those situations if you learn from them and being able to allow myself to say I'll make better choices you know I'll allow myself to look at the red flags you know being able to trust my gut my intuitive and flow with that you know, never allow myself to be in a situation where it makes me feel obligated or uncomfortable in a bad way. You know, a lot of times we got to step out of our comfort zone and, and being able to do that. Because this right here is stepping out of my comfort zone. Because I tell people I, I put this stuff out where people can say not so nice things. I've had it, you know. But it was just like, I, you know, I, that doesn't have anything to do with me. Because it's just like, you know, people that are close to me, they know I got receipts. You know, it'll contradict everything that, you know, my family has been said or people that want to hate on me from that. I have receipts. You know, it, it's not bragging if you can have proof of it. And that's what I have, you know. But going through this, when I say it, it's really brought me so much strength. So much strength where, you know, you had to deal with things on your own. You had to be very vulnerable in situations where, you know, you had nobody to run to. You know, a situation like this, you would think you have your family to you know to help you and and support you when it was like my my family wanted me exiled you know I was that secret you know in different situations so it, it's been scary but I had to be able to allow myself to know if I got family this crossed over this protecting me I got that God is protecting me there's nothing I can't overcome there's nothing I can't move forward and do you know so you know, I hope my experience was able to help you in some kind of way. You know, I know I might lose a couple of subscribers on people ain't going to say nothing. Or I might have more people trying to do some voodoo, hoodoo, voodoo on me. And it'll be fine. You know, it'll be fine. I'm always protected on different things. Um, but, you know, it's just me speaking on my truth or whatever. Um, I know I got a lot more subscribers. And, you know, that's truly a blessing. So I appreciate um I appreciate all the support that I have, you know, especially y'all come back and, you know, send me different emails and stuff like that, which I have not applied to. So, I, you know, I apologize. I'll get to that. But, um, you know, just the support is really, really, truly a blessing to be able to have that. And, you know, it makes me uh, very grateful that I can be able to speak on my things proudly, be able to speak on those things, um, because you never know 
where your experience can really, you know, help somebody. Because a lot of times we really feel like we ain't going to be able to get over things. We really, it really can't heal from it. And with my experience being able to tell you, you know, it's not easy to be able to talk about things like that. Especially, you know, on a sensitive subject of my dad's passing and who my dad is. But, you know, God has his reasons for me to be talking about these things. But it's just to say, you know, I, I, forg- I had to forgive my aunts and uncles. I had to be able to forgive my mom. You know, and I had to be able to forgive her husband and his wife, you know, and those are the different things. It's like, especially, you know, how they moved and how they continue to move. You know, it that's something that pe- pretty much anybody else would have probably ended up, they wouldn't be here no more. <laughs> you know, they really wouldn't be there. But God had something different for me. But I hope my experience was able to help you. I would love to give a post notification shout out to Danielle. I love the way, your, the way you spell that. Um... Chocolate, uh, chocolate. I hope I pronounced that right. I apologize if I didn't uh, say it right. God, Kong, uh, uh, Zella, Khan, much love to you as well. And Lamb Sauce, welcome to the fam as well. Um, I hope this, again, this was it, be able to give you enlightenment, you know, and being able to share my purpose with you, you know, what brought me here and what makes me really, you know, blessed to be able to do these things, you know, being able to share it because this is like my virtual diary, you know, on different things that I go through because it's very therapeutic, you know, not holding things on your chest, you know, you have to be able to get through things and a lot of times it takes time for that to happen, it takes time for that to go through that process, but these are the things when you face something that's very detrimental that was sent to destroy you, is going to make you discover a part of yourself that you never knew was there. So, you know, drop a line. I would love to get your feedback. Um, it would be greatly appreciated. You know, give a thumbs up, share. Um, you know, uh, I leave all my contact information in the description box below. Um, I also have my podcast out on my community section. I also do as well. You know, or even if you're interested in podcasting, you know, please, you know, email me, DM me or whatever. You know, we can, you know, we can, uh, talk about that. Or if you just even want to, you know, share, and, you know, a lot of things we go through and it's hard for us to be able to open up, you know, and people, I guess, feel more comfortable with me when I'm able to do it with myself like that. That's, that, that takes a lot, you know, for you have to be able to talk about. But, you know, I love being able to help people. And it's just like with my situation, I've been able to help so many people, whether or not we disconnect, we're no longer talking or we still are. You know, I still feel uh, a benefit of blessings from that, no matter how it ended or, you know, if it still goes on is still appreciated so it's just all about spiritual networking you know if you want to tell me about your experience or even ask advice or get my my insight about it or my opinion you know i'm grateful to be able to do that whatever we speak on is confidential and i'll try to help out the best way i can um if you uh feel like a generous uh person to give a donation cash app is there at the bottom as well in the description box you know uh, whatever you're trying to manifest into your life, you know, I'll give you so many beautiful blessings um, to con- continue. You know, things, you know, when things are really going to be a huge blessing, your life is never going to come to you easy. So you got to stay consistent and persistent with yourself. Never sleep. Stay woke on yourself. You know, don't do that. You know, a lot of people see your potential in your light and they try to do any any and everything to make you feel like your dreams are too big to uh, conquer or they don't you don't have what it takes to get over. And you truly do. Because if you didn't, God wouldn't give you the position you have. So. Allow yourself to do that because the devil will convince you today that you have no way of doing it just because you have blessings that will open the door for you tomorrow. So, I hope you were able to resonate with that. You know, please be safe and responsible for everything you do uh, through all the social distancing. Please make sure you give out love, light, positivity, words, vibes, frequencies. You never know. That can really take somebody a long way. And just for you doing it with no kind of motives, intentions, or cause, hey, it's going to take you even further. So, much love to you. Namaste. God bless. Shalom. Um, and much love. Peace.